Sometimes it's simply about defending so-called honor. Yo, shooting a weapon that size in such a small space is insane. Like Sweden, this has to stop. Shout out Sweden. Shout out, shout out, shout out Sweden. You click the title, you read the page. What's going on in Sweden? The Sweden gang violence right now is out of this world. And I ain't gonna lie, when I first got wind of Sweden rap, I was like, oh, this is tough. Then I started doing my research because I started getting certain comments. And I'm like, oh, they really rapping what they living in Sweden. And I'm like, damn, Sweden? I would have never thought in a million years Sweden been giving it up like this. So... Um, I'm on this Sweden journey, getting to learn, you know, the the history, the the current news that's going on, and it's not it's not looking too good. All right, so sit back, relax. We gonna get to the to the rice and beans. To what's going on in Sweden? Like, how did it all start? What's going on, Sweden? Subscribe for the vibe. Hope you're feeling good. Hope you're feeling great. And I'm working on my top five Sweden rappers too. Drop a comment. Tell me. <laughs> What is happening? This video is definitely getting demonetized. Like the video just started and he busting out. Hey yo, that sound crazy. Let me let me rephrase that. The video just started and he just popping off. Umer Sarihan still finds it difficult to go to the cemetery. Nearly 50 years ago, he left Turkey for Sweden thinking it was a peaceful country. Shit, I thought Sweden was a peaceful country too. This news to me. Today, he's standing at the grave of his son, Serda, who was shot by gangsters this past March. Sarihan is still in disbelief. Written on a stone are the words, we miss you so much. My son was more than a son to me. He was my best friend and companion. He was everything to me. A hard-working person with principles. The real estate agent was shot dead in front of his wife and children in his house near Stockholm. Allegedly an act of retaliation. Serdar's son... Omer's grandson is allegedly involved with a gang and is suspected of having shot at the family home of a rival gang member. They broadcast a photo of my grandson on the TV program Wanted. Three hours later, my son was dead. Oh, so he was wanted. So yeah, that was get back. Wanted. That was get back. That's what it sounded like. Sound like that was get back because they said he was wanted for doing something. Damn, man, this gotta stop. His grandson's alleged involvement in gang violence weighs heavily on Umer. He and his family have had no contact with his grandson for years. We put in a lot of effort so he could get a job and live a normal life, but unfortunately, he chose this path. Gang wars have been spreading fear and terror in Sweden for years. In 2022, they claimed 62 lives, more than ever before. In Stockholm alone, the Wall Street Journal calculated that the murder rate per capita is 30 times higher than in London. Conflicts primarily revolve around turf wars in the drug trade. Sometimes it's simply about defending so-called honour. Yo, shooting a weapon that size in such a small space is insane like sweden this has to stop like that's look like it's an apartment building he got a whole yo this is crazy most of the perpetrators <laughs> hail from migrant communities they shoot through apartment doors and at cars throw hand grenades and plant bombs and increasing number of innocent people are killed as a result. The government is on high alert. 
Sverige har aldrig för Sweden has never experienced anything like this. No country in Europe has experienced anything like this. I've asked the national police chief and the commander of the army to join me. We want to see how the army is helping the police to fight against criminal gangs. There aren't any soldiers patrolling the streets of Stockholm, yet. But for investigative journalist Diamant Salihu, the government's announcement shows just how powerful the criminal networks in Sweden have become. Man, listen, the police is scared. That's what it sounds like. Like, you look at what the police guns compared to the criminal guns. Like, the police is scared. And that's the problem. They need more police. So, the police look scared. But there is one major conflict at the moment uh, within a network called the Foxtrot Network that has been divided in two fractions uh, because of debt, because of internal conflicts and they are now fighting each other to the death. Uh, a big problem that Swedish authorities have. Yo, did he get punched in the eye? Like, what, what's happening with his face? Like, no this, but like, we look like, look like, he, like he probably got punched in the eye trying to do journalism in Sweden or something. I was watching a video the other day when they were trying to record Sweden and they was like it was like a, a reporter and a dude was trying to run over the reporter. I'm like, oh nah, Sweden giving it up crazy. Have when it comes to dealing with this situation that we have at the moment is that the leaders that control a, a lot of the drug market, uh, they are operating from abroad. <laughs> The police in Gotsunda, a suburb of the central Swedish city of Uppsala, have deemed it to be a high-risk area. According to Swedish reports, gangs like to recruit new members here. Boredom, a lack of respect toward law enforcement and low sentences all make this easier for gangs. The area is filled with social housing apartments built in the 1960s and 70s. These days, immigrants make up most of the population. A majority of the 10,000 households here are considered low income. Fifteen-year-old Ahmed takes us on a tour of Gotsunda. He was born in Iraq and came to Sweden with his parents ten years ago. People have so many prejudices against Gotsunda. But everyone who lives here is like family. We all get along well together. After school, Ahmed hangs out on the streets with his friend Abed. Sometimes they go to one of Gotsunda's two youth clubs, which are open all day. Nobody wants to be filmed here. Ahmed says there are plenty of things to do for fun in the neighbourhood, but many kids his age still turn to crime. Yes, I have friends who get into things like that. Yeah. But I always try to stay away from that stuff. There's always a risk of getting pulled into something like that. And it sounds like they get him young. He just said, yo, my friend, he 15, his friend's 15 and all that. And they getting in this trouble. And they're like, damn, 15, bro. These dudes are losing their life so young over nothing, bro. I try not to stay out too late at night. And I prefer going out with a friend. Ahmed's precautions are justified. In August, a 13-year-old boy was shot on a bus in Gotsunda. He goes to Ahmed's school. Yo, 13? 13? When I found out that the dude they killed in Chicago was 14, I was like, 14 is crazy. 13? 13? Whole life ahead of him. It's not only the victims who are getting younger and younger, it's also the perpetrators. Gang leaders prefer to recruit 14 to 15 year olds who are typically paid the equivalent of a few hundred euros for their first errands. Later, they might be ordered to commit murder, which pays much more. The increasingly younger ages of new recruits shows the full extent to which the state and society in Sweden are failing, says expert Diamant Salihu. 
He's also a child of immigrants from Kosovo. In Sweden, if you commit a murder and if you're 16, you can get maximum four years in youth custody. In Sweden, at 16, they only giving you four years for catching a body at 16? Four years? No wonder why they running amok. Where you can have access to an iPad and communicate with, a, with friends on the other side. So the risk is very low for the reward they can get, either money or quite often status. These three social workers in Godsunda take to the streets to prevent minors from falling into the... Damn, she got a fat ass. Shorty right here. What a beautiful... ...clutches of gangs. Every evening at 6pm, they head to the shopping centre and talk wagon. to security staff, but more importantly, to young people. Their message is simple. We're here for anyone who needs help. But sometimes the gangs are faster. Oh yes, they are trying to recruit the younger people. Uh, but what we do is like we're going in, in the middle schools, like year four and five, where they're like 10, 11 years old. And we try to teach them about the warning signs and what can happen. And also what is against the law and what's, uh, what's lawful and what kind of support can you get. Uh, so obviously, we can't give them exactly what the recruiters can, but we do try to offer them jobs, meaningful free time, uh, positive role models and stuff like that. Uh, and unfortunately, they mostly live for... Yo, she, she fine, but she like mad stocky, like mad brawly, like... Sweden chicks brawling like that, she like she'd knock a nigga out like the day or for the hour and think, oh, maybe I can get some status, maybe I can get some fast money. They don't see how it will turn out in the long haul. And that's what we really try to talk with them about, you know. Ahmed and Abed are still out and about on the streets. Everything is quiet in Gotsunda. The police are never far away. Their friends meet at a boxing gym, where self-defence exercises help relieve stress. Ahmed observes the goings-on, but his thoughts are focused on the rampant crime affecting his peers. It's unnecessary and totally stressful. To constantly be on the lookout for police is no life at all. On the other hand, it's really easy to commit a crime. But you can be smarter than that. According to a 2022 police report, only one in four fatal shootings gets solved. One in four is crazy. They, they body in the police department in Godsunda thinks the criticism of its work is unjustified because their work is constrained by the law. There is a law from 1942 that prohibits us from searching homes after 9 p.m. unless there are exceptional circumstances. I what the fact that Sweden has a law that prohibits them from searching homes after 9 p.m. is stupid. Most crimes happen like 10 p.m. And even if I know if I know I can go get away with some shit and bring it back to the crib past nine and the cops can't fuck with me and I'm good until until whatever day. That yeah, I feel bad for the police in Sweden. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. And I see why they scared, because like I said, the criminals got bigger guns, more money. I get it. I get it, police. I get it. Criminals don't get up until 9 p.m. these days. What worries us now is that so many innocent people are becoming victims of these conflicts, even though they have nothing to do with them. Some are pinning their hopes on former criminals like Peter Svensson. Not only is he a reformed gang member, he also served four years in prison. Burglary, drugs and violent crimes. That was all part of it. 
Today, he runs a program for criminals who want to get out. The brutality of today's generation frightens him. These days, it's about murdering people. It's gone to the extreme. In the past, they might have injured their opponent with a knife or shot them in the legs. The level of violence continues to rise. At the same time, we have parallel societies in Sweden where a gang controls everything. They decide when you can leave the house, stop cars and tell everyone to keep quiet. For the right-wing populist party, the Sweden Democrats, now the second strongest party in the country, it's clear who's responsible for the creation of parallel societies and violence – migrants, and Muslims in particular. This video, produced by the party, claims that migration to Sweden has only led to high costs and more crime. They claim that Swedish families are forced to move to other cities to escape the violence. And that's messed up. Could you imagine living somewhere and people just come in your shit and start messing up your shit? Like, that must suck. I feel for the Swedish people, too. Like, that's that's messed up. It's kind of like what's going down in New York. Like, they got the, a bunch of migrants. And not all the migrants, but the other day they had a migrant pop a gun in Times Square. Like, that's rare. I mean, it happened before, but that's very rare, you know? Then he shot at a cop. It's also rare. Americans don't do that. Migrants do because they don't respect law enforcement. Adelan Shekarabi is a former minister for the Social Democrats and a child of Iranian immigrants, and he disagrees. But we cannot stop this development uh, without making a lot of investments in, in crime prevention and a lot of investments in, in breaking the segregation. But th another thing, too, I want to speak on, as far as the migrant goes, too, they're trying to survive. got to understand. They come, in, they come into these places trying to survive. So if the resources aren't there for them to survive, then they're going to make their own resources. Just trying to survive all In the Swedish society and, and uh, creating a, a much a more inclusive society uh, where young people have a good chance to enter labor market and, and, and find a positive future for themselves. Ahmed and his friend Abed don't see a future for themselves with the gangs of Godsunda. Instead, a new recording studio in the youth centre has piqued their interest. Children and the young people from the district have already produced a hit song titled We Are Godsunda. And that's what we should focus on, that everyone is doing well, that everyone feels safe and at home. For many years, Umer Sarihan also felt at home in Sweden. But since the violent death of his son, his feelings have changed. And he says there are many to blame. First of all, it's the fault of the drug lords who ordered the murder and the criminals who carried it out. The third person at fault is my grandson, who got us into this situation in the first place. I'm glad he blamed his grandson. I was just about to say that. Like, you know, it sounded like it was a get back going on. So, you know, you got to take accountability. You know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. It's fucked up. It's unnecessary, and I just want peace, peace, peace. And finally, the authorities, who have been watching this go on for so long, when they should be protecting their citizens. Umer Sarihan is not the only person who wants to feel safe again in Sweden. Man, listen, this is what? Listen, subscribe for the vibe.